Welcome to the Quail 2019, and this is our roundup of, well, not everything because we can't include everything. There's so much amazing stuff here, but just some of the highlights. Starting with McLaren and the 25th anniversary of the F1. Now they've got four cars here. There's one that's going to be in the um, Sotheby's sale, which is a fixed wing, so it's got the high downforce kit on it. It was based out of New Zealand. Uh, they've also got another four here, all with fixed rear wings, which is pretty extraordinary. This is one of the five customer LMs. There was one that stays in the factory as well, which looks identical to this, basically, in the orange. This is the second customer car. And yeah, I love it. My dream is to drive an F1 LM one day. Moving along to here, so this has also got the high downforce kit and apparently it has an LM spec engine in it as well. And we keep moving along this way. Follow me down here. We've got the modern McLarens at the back. So we've got the new GT over there. And there's a 720S and some bare carbon, I think. This one has recently, so it's obviously got a long tail here. This was previously in a Lark livery and has just gone back to the original with Parabolica livery, which I think looks absolutely stunning. Almost with a sort of the, the Fina kind of check and flag bit on there as well. Moving down here, a 570S GT4 race car with a unicorn on the front because why not? You know, and a unicorn with rainbow mane as well and tail to the final one of the quartet of F1s here uh, also with a high downforce kit and this one apparently has been been seen driving around Quail and Monterey over the week G gets used an awful lot and I think looks particularly cool in motorsport white so that's McLaren where next uh, this way I think 911s it's all been hand painted it's almost sort of arts and crafts sort of look to it it's, it's rather lovely so Lamborghini I'm not sure if they're getting rid of it or not but it's off the stand so this is um, what was unveiled the 63 oh, it's an SVJ Roadster but with 63 obviously an important year for the company this is the Draco GTE, which is uh, $1.25 million. Uh, they're only building 25 of them, but this is actually a production car. This has been out running around. It's not just a concept. Uh, it's got, as you can see here, 1,200 horsepower, uh, the 206 miles an hour. Apparently, when they were developing it, uh, it's been in development for about five years, and it did actually set a production car lap record around the Nürburgring at the time. And, yeah, it's uh, interesting talking to the guys here. They're... They're putting a focus on sort of obviously design, it looks very nice, but also very much the torque vectoring capabilities and how that affects handling with the car, which is something I'm yeah, probably most excited about as to how that can influence EVs in the future. So yeah, one to watch out for. Built in San Jose. So there we are. Right, on this way. Something more conventional. We're gonna do more on Singer, but they're celebrating 10 years. And I just thought I wanted to point this out because mint green, I think it's one of my favourite Porsche colours. Looks ace, doesn't it, in that Targa? Anyway, Ferrari over here. So we've wandered onto the Ferrari lawn or fairway, I suppose. Um, that's a Dino over there, it's a 206. Down here, though, that's what you'd normally expect a Dino to look like, is this, which I think looks absolutely stunning. Without the bumpers, it's got the fed in headlights here. Apparently, the engine was also it's a sort of hot rod engine so it had fuel injection on it and stuff like that the guy bought it it wasn't really a runner when he bought it and then it never really got going and he kind of left it for about 20 years and then got it out again discovered it was actually it did come out of ferrari like that and i just think it's beautiful really really beautiful anyway let's keep going down here 599 here somebody's chopped the roof put this new mechanism into it which is Interesting. And a GTO and quite a, a sort of aubergine colour here, or eggplant, I suppose, as we're in the US. This, an N Largo 8 year old Superfast. Hashtag not a wrap, apparently, this colour. 
It does look pretty mean, actually, that. I rather like that. Also, the 12 can look just a little bit pinched at the front, but this, with the wider there, it's pretty cool, actually. Right, where are we going next? I think over here, let's go and have a look at some film cars. So we've got the Batmobile down there, we've got the DeLorean from Back to the Future. And then if we walk up here, we've actually got a lot of VW vans on this side. All these campers. Split screen there. Herbie! Look at that! How good is that? Got a star on the ground, yeah, as well. Next up, let's go through this way, I think. Back down over here. Walk past some Rolls Royces. Got some um, sort of pastel shades going on. Match various people's trousers. Primrose black badge. Not sure about it. This is pretty cool. So we've obviously got 308 rally car there, which is wonderful and beautiful. This RS200 uh, Evo. So when obviously the RS200 came right at the end of the Group B era and uh, was partly responsible really for the end of Group B cars in, in rallying. And this, then they, a lot of them went into uh, rallycross because they were, were perfect for that. And this dominated almost the British rallycross scene as far as I know. And uh, yeah, just wild machines. Where to next? I think we're going to go over this way over here. This, the original concept car really, the Y job, which uh, Y was apparently used in the aircraft industry for prototypes. And this was the sort of, well, almost a design study that informed an awful lot of future cars. And it was driven around on the streets until about 1951. It was designed in 1938 and is just pretty extraordinary. I've spoken to a couple of designers here who absolutely love this and think it's you know, really probably their car of, car of the show. Let's walk down here because we've got all sorts of cars with where well, you look at it and they've got different engines in it. So this is a good example. It's a Mustang, but not as we know it, Jim. So this has an F430 Ferrari engine in it that's been turbocharged. So it's a Ferrari Mustang. Beautifully done, though. And then moving down here, this is a 300SL Gullwing with a V8 in it. No, I'm not so sure about this, but um, there we are. This is Runga, which is quite hard to look at because it's so mirrored that if you catch it the wrong, it just shines the sun at you. But it's got a Porsche engine back of it. Um, but where is the one I want to see? They've moved it. Where is it? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? All sorts of specs of um, sort of more regular supercars, I suppose, here. This 918 Spider. I'd heard that there were ones out there, so it's got the Vice Tech pack on it. All of them came with these brake calipers here, and they've painted the rest of the bodywork to match, which is quite striking. Actually, let's come over here because we've got some other Porsches that have not out of the factory, but um, quite cool nonetheless. Just thought I would um, point out this. Car, which is a Tut Hill Safari Porsche. This is going to take emotion, part in the um, Safari Rally later this year. And it's been parked in a bunker, because why not? Because it's a Safari Porsche in this fantastic colour scheme as well. I love this car. It's, um, yeah, it's very cool. So I'd heard that these existed, and uh, it's the first time I've ever seen one. It's, it's fair enough. It's just taking the wing off a GT3, in this case, or we'll doing a GT2 as well, RS. And, um, yeah, so you've got a sort of touring version of a GT3 RS. I'm not sure, if I'm honest, but um, it's certainly a look and I'm quite pleased to see one. And then over here, the same company is doing these turbo fan style wheels, which obviously we saw on the 935 Tribute. And then they've done this sort of low drag rear for a GT2 RS as well, shoving the wing all the way back out there. It's certainly been done rather neatly, which is Nice. So they're handing out all the awards at the moment. Sounding good, uh, looking good. And the next car, beautiful next award, black countach over racing. there. This category represents the pinnacle of speed in various classes. Look at that. Some of these cars remain used. But this today. is the car that I wanted to show you. Look at this. Vintage, many are quite capable of running with the modern cars in many cases. The winner is this 
This XK150 hot rod. It's got a V12 under the bonnet. And it's been done absolutely beautifully. So low. So they shipped this across from Australia where it's been done. And it is just stunning. So it's got a V12 under the bonnet. This is a gentleman responsible for it. <laughs> I think absolutely, possibly, possibly my star of the entire event. So cool. I didn't think you could really make an XK120 that much more beautiful, but I think this has probably done it. There are too many here to really go through, but just it's worth just walking past all these wonderful pre-war Bentleys as well. I haven't ever seen such a collection of them. Oh, come and listen to this. Oh, they started up the F1 LM. Oh, so good. They're very subtle, but very cool spec for a Senna. I know everyone's a fan of the styling, and I agree, but it's got this uh, sort of rainbow metal fleck in it. But essentially, it looks black from a distance with the sort of it's a JPS livery, effectively, isn't it? But a very, very subtle one. I rather like that. Probably the best looking Senna I've seen, I think. Another Senna just over here with a uh, sort of FINA inspired livery. Again, it's interesting seeing how people are kind of, you know, these days, there's no such thing as a standard car half the time, is there? Everyone's got their take on it, particularly with these supercars. It's always interesting seeing when people actually come up with something like this. Obviously inspired by some of the original McLaren F1 liveries. That sort of car, it's not, it's not really my, my sort of thing, as it were, but you can't help but just be impressed by the sheer scale and effort that's gone into something like that. It's just extraordinary. Everywhere you go here, there is something else to look at, something else to sort of drool over, there's some, some detail in it. There's a reason really for every single car here. It's fabulous. It's the first time I've ever been and hopefully it won't be the last. So that was a few of the highlights from Quail 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry we couldn't cover everything. I'm going to have a look around some other stuff.